Hello friends! Today I'm here with a much more positive video and that is my favorite reads of 2019. If you didn't watch my worst of 2019, um, the thing is I have to wait until the 31st of December to really decide just in case, just in case there's one more book that will make it onto either of these lists. So I did have to wait. Um, I'm filming this on the 1st of January. I don't know when you're watching this. <laughs> that's up to future me. Um, but that's when I'm filming. I made my lists. Uh, everything is ready and today I'm gonna talk about the best books slash reading experiences of 2019. I'm gonna be doing it the same way as the worst ones. I'm gonna go from 10 to 1 because these are ordered. I am that kind of person. So we're gonna go from my 10th favorite book to my most, 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 most beloved favorite book of the entire year. So at number 10, I actually have a book that I mentioned vaguely in the previous video and that is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Evelyn Hugo, however you want to um, say that name. I just had a friend who preferred to be called Evelyn instead of Evelyn, you feel? So that's how I always say it now. This is about um, an aging Hollywood star who hires a young reporter to tell her all about her scandalous life and about her seven husbands, obviously, and about the love of her life. Um, not a spoiler, a woman. Okay, so many people don't say this when I talk about this book for some reason, but the main romance in this novel is between women. You should know that. This really reminded me of The Thirteenth Tale, which is one of my favorite books of all time, because that one is about an aging writer hiring a young writer to write her life story. I love this. It's very chiclety, which makes it a very fast read. And I have read um, three Taylor Jenkins reads, but this is my favorite one without doubt. It's All of her books are very chiclety, really, but this one just pulls at your heartstrings. Um, it discusses some important topics because um, Evelyn Hugo is also biracial. Or is she Latina? I don't remember correctly right now in this second, but she's a person of color. Um, she's also a woman in classic old Hollywood, which is also something that needs to be talked about more, and I think it does a pretty good job of talking about it here. Um, I don't know how well researched it is, but it was fun nonetheless and I think it discussed some interesting and important topics anyway. This was great, I cried. <laughs> At number 9 I have You Must Not Miss by Katrina Leno. Katrina Leno is a miracle of young adult literature for me and I do not understand why more people don't talk about her because her writing style is incredibly unique, very original and her stories are on a whole new level of whimsy. Um, I read The Summer of Salt before I read You Must Not Miss, but this is my favorite because it verges on horror. It's a very dark novel where a teenage girl deals with her family falling apart, with her mother having some really serious issues, with her father leaving, and then her life at school and everything that happens around her. And she essentially um, finds a door to this whole other world where whatever she wants becomes real, but all of those come real as a sacrifice on her body, on her soul, on her mind um, in the real life. So she has to deal with that. And I think it's incredibly powerful and it's incredibly well written. And I truly wish that more people would read her because she is a voice to like look out for. Katrina Leno is incredible. At number eight, I have one of the last reads of 2018. I think there was the second to last one or one of those um, that I read in 2019, and that is See What I Have Done by Sarah Schmidt. This is the fictionalized story of Lizzie Borden. If you don't know who Lizzie Borden is, uh, she was um, accused of killing her father and her stepmother in 18-something in the late 19th century, and then being uh, absolved, absolved of her crimes let free. I don't know English. It's fairly short and it's definitely about something that I've read a lot about and have seen a lot of media about, but at the same time it never ever had a boring moment for me and the writing is really great and what I enjoyed the most about this is the way Sarah Schmidt managed to capture the atmosphere of the Borden house and the way she described um, Lizzie's like I think it was described as dissociation. It, it, it's never stated, but it just felt like incredible depersonalization and dissociation. I thought that was described perfectly. Dissociation is not fun, and a lot of what um, 
Lizzie is feeling or like the way she's seeing the world around her is very reminiscent of the way a person feels when they start to dissociate or when they're completely dissociated so I enjoyed that I really enjoyed the way it described everything and how distinct the characters were and just I enjoyed the writing in this a lot. At number seven, I have a book that's very surprising to me. At number seven, I have Middle Game by Shannon McGuire, who wrote Every Heart of Dory, which I fucking hated two years ago when I read it. I literally gave it one star and it was one of the worst books I read that year. I was going into this feeling kind of mm, hesitant and the reading experience actually came out to be at three stars. Then I upped it to four stars, but I'm still thinking about this book more than half a year later after reading it. These characters are still in my mind on the daily. It's a, very difficult to describe what this is about. It's essentially about two twins, Roger and Dodger, and their way of communicating and the ascent to godhood. And I don't think you can really describe this novel because it's so complicated. It deals with alchemy, with fantasy worlds, sci-fi worlds, just everything. And it is one of those books that I finished and I was like, how did this person even keep all of that in their brain? I do not know, but I am impressed. <laughs> At number six, I have Like a Love Story by Abdi Nazemian. I hope that's how you say that name. I try, you know, but I don't even speak English, so you know. This is set in 80s New York during the HIV crisis. Um, it talks about an Iranian boy. Is that how you pronounce it in English? Like I said, I don't, I can't even speak. Iranian, Iranian, I don't know. Um, boy who moves into New York with like his new stepfather and everything and then he meets a gay boy at school and he makes friends with the gay boy's best friend. It's a, it's a whole thing. Um, this talks about gayness in 1980s New York and in America in that time in general. It talks about the HIV crisis, about the marches, about the protests, about body image, about friendship, about love, about being in a closet, about being afraid. Um, it only captures a certain part of that community. It doesn't talk about trans men or trans women or anyone else. It mainly focuses on people of color slash gay men during the HIV crisis, which obviously is a little exclusive and it could have been more inclusive but the way it's written was really powerful for me and it hit me in all the right spots and this is another book that made me bawl this year it is a sad book but at the same time in some way it gave me a lot of hope it gave me the feeling of community it gave me the feeling of um love which i think is very important so at the end of the day there were more things that i enjoyed than things that i found were problematic i really enjoyed the way it just portrayed these relationships because I feel oftentimes in YA um, the goal of a character is to become perfect or the character already is perfect and they have to deal with some other imperfect people but this book has very imperfect and flawed characters who don't who don't magically become perfect and I actually enjoy that aspect they are still flawed they have gone gone through a lot but at the end of the day you cannot reach perfectness really so I enjoyed that about this novel as well it gave me a lot of feelings that made my heart very sad and very happy at the same time is what I'm trying to say at number five so we're halfway through um I have 10 minutes 38 seconds in this strange world by Elif Shafak this was um shortlisted I think for the men booker this year and that was really the reason I read it this is about a dying prostitute in the streets of Istanbul as she dies and remembers her entire life this is one of those books that like really take you on a journey, take you through an entire life, take you through relationships, through feelings, through associations that you pick up on as you live. Um, it just tells you a story. This felt like an adult fairy tale almost. And what I really loved about this is that it changes tones seam seamlessly. Like the first half of the novel is something completely else than the this bit and then this bit is completely different than the rest of the novel it goes from a really dark tone to a comedy and from a comedy to like this really spiritual like beyond this world kind of moment and i love that the first thing was the first part was really magical then the comedy actually worked for me i laughed at this book and then towards the end i actually shed a tear again i just had to stop for a second and really think about um people's loyalty and how much of everything just 
goes from people loving one another, you know? It was just one of those moments and then the spiritual ending was just perfect for me, so I loved this one a lot. At number four, I have Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro. Kazuo Ishiguro is someone I have been eyeing for years, then I got intimidated when he won the Nobel Prize, and then this year I finally picked this one up, and this was an incredible reading experience for me. I absolutely adored this. I think I read most of it in one afternoon. This is about um, three friends who all go to the same school, there's a sci-fi twist to this slash it's very speculative fiction that talks about society and how everything works and how it shouldn't and how it should, you know, it's very speculative. I don't want to give away the plot twist because I think you should figure it out on your own, it's part of the reading experience. I knew what it was because I had seen the movie, but if you don't know and you figure it out like somewhere here, you're like probably blown by that. Um, so I don't want to dropped it. But it's incredible. I think Kazuo Ishiguro has an incredible way of just inserting himself into any character that he wants and truly understanding that character and writing from their point of view perfectly. He just changes tone and style and everything. It's really astounding to me and he's this is like, it's only at like number four, I think. But he is actually my new favorite author, I think. I only read another book by him, The Remains of the Day, but I also loved that one. And I cannot wait to read more from him. So he's probably my favorite discovery of the year. At number three, I have Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. I was interested in this because it is said in... I don't remember if it admits that it's set there or not, but it's set at a establishment that is based on the Dozier School for Boys, which was a place where they essentially tortured um, boys from 15 to 18, I think. I don't, I'm not sure. Um, mostly black boys, because they had a building for the white boys and then they had a building for people of color. Um, they had a little building tucked away where if you had a punishment there, it wasn't sure if you would actually come out of there or if they would kill you while giving you a beating. Um, and this book talks about that, about a boy who, by such a fucked moment in his life, is completely accidental, gets sent into this establishment and how he deals with that and it's told in the past and it's told in the present. Um, it is written incredibly well and then towards the end there's a plot twist that I somehow did not see coming at all that made my jaw drop to the floor and to this day I have just random moments of I'm doing something else and then I will just randomly remember that moment where I read that plot twist which by the way was while standing in front of my work, about to go in, but I had only a couple pages left, so I had to finish the book. So I was just standing there, like, 10 meters from my work's door, and I was like, I'm gonna go in, but first I have to finish this book. So that was where my jaw dropped. Um, probably someone saw me and was like, what the fuck is she doing? And I don't blame them. Um, that was when that happened, and I still think about that to this day. It was one of the most powerful books that I read in a long, long time. It was incredible. At number two, I have The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern, which is a complete surprise to me that this novel, that I even read this novel is surprising to me, because I didn't like The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I know it's a very well-loved book, but I actually disliked that one a lot. But this one, oh man, this one. This is about um, a boy slash man who is in college, and he goes to the library, and one day he finds a book there that talks about various fairy tales and made-up worlds and everything and then one of the chapters suddenly talks about an experience that he had as a boy um it talks about his life so he tries to figure out who wrote the book how it ended up in his library what's happening why was he in the book that kind of stuff um this is incredibly whimsical nonsensical almost absurdist almost like you reading this and not much makes sense and then there's like a couple reveals like around the half point where so many things get tied together and so many things start making sense and you're just reading these like whoa that's happening and i could gush about this novel for a very long time because i just love this reading experience and this book 
so very much. And then at number one, I actually have a book that I read back in February, and going into this, I also didn't think that I would love it as much as I did, but I literally gave it five stars, and I still think about this book, and I still talk about this book constantly to anyone who will listen, and that is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. This is a chunk. This is a chunker of a book. This is a brick. This is a weapon, really, um, and it's a weapon filled with incredibly incredible world building, incredible characters, incredible cultures, incredible everything. There's only a couple things that didn't work for me, but in the grand scheme of things, I didn't even mind. I just loved this. I loved every character that was introduced in this. I loved the very incredibly casual inclusion of queer people in this entire world, not just with the main characters, because there is an incredible queer relationship is one of the main relationships in this novel, but it's also so casual and in the background it was amazing and just the world building, like the first hundred pages I was kind of lost but then when everything started making sense, I, this is, listen, this is almost 900 pages long and I read this in I think six days because I just, every moment I had I spent reading this book. It is just incredible. I could try and sum up the plot for you, but I don't even think I could do it justice because it's it's just such a big world. There's a there are dragons, there's a family curse, there's just so many things going on. There's like so many religions, people on the mission, like troops, armies, alchemists, scientists, historians, just everything. This is one of my, fan my one of my favorite fantasy novels of all time, if I'm being honest with you. I haven't read such a great fantasy in such a long time. I'm just... I love this so much. And that's it. That's not all the books I loved in 2019, but these are the books that I enjoyed the most in 2019. Um, if you enjoyed any of these, please do leave a comment and let's talk about it, because it's always fun to talk about something you enjoyed with someone else who also enjoyed uh, and if you didn't like them also leave a comment and we can discuss if I'm wrong, if you're wrong, if we can find common ground, you know, that kind of thing. I would be very grateful. If you enjoyed this video it would be amazing if you decided to give it a like and if you enjoyed the video it will also be great if you decided to subscribe because I'm looking for friends. That's all from me and that means that for now in true Alan Ripley fashion I am signing off.